Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video. And this time I will be reviewing the obscure anime OVA called Ichi the Killer Episode Zero. Now this obscure atrocity is based off the cult classic manga called Ichi the Killer, written and drawn by Hideo Yamamoto. Now I have only read the first couple of chapters for Ichi the Killer. Well, I, I've read a lot more than the first few chapters. I, I went a long way. And I did enjoy the manga, however, I only really enjoyed the parts that featured Ichi. I found his character to be really interesting and I liked seeing his I liked seeing Ichi's character development. I liked seeing his disturbing mind, his outlook on the world, his reactions. And this is a controversial opinion, but I really did not like Kakihara all too much. I don't know, he seemed like a cool enough dude, but his story is very involved in the Yakuza the yakuza you know culture and it pretty much comes down to political intrigue a lot of the time and i have zero interest in that kind of stuff but i do like Hakihara by himself i just feel like he could have been used in more interesting scenarios rather than what was presented and what i've read the manga so far but enough about the manga this is about the anime the anime came out in the early 2000s i don't know what year i think like maybe the year 2000 itself or anywhere from 2000 or 2004 it was directed by Shinji Ishihara, who, interesting enough, worked on anime like Fairy Tale, the Air Gear OVAs, and Tokyo Majin, a very underrated anime more people need to talk about. And I might end up talking about Tokyo Majin one day in the future because I really enjoyed that supernatural show. Now, what exactly is Ishii the Killer Episode Zero? As you can tell from the title, it is an, an anime original prologue based off the manga. Now, the funny thing is that the manga also has its own prologue to the main story, but it's completely different from the OVA. The OVA does not take any elements from the manga whatsoever, and it just does its own thing. It tells the story about Ichi and how he eventually turned into the person that we all know and love. I mean, yeah, he is a pretty cool, interesting character to talk about. Now, another thing to note before I start talking about this OVA is that anime sites label this as a dementia anime. What is dementia? Dementia is a mental illness that is not technically an anime genre, but other, but other sites like to use it as a genre. When people call an anime like a dementia anime, what they mean is that it has heavy psychological themes that border on surreal and often uses horror as part of the main elements. Now, it doesn't always have to be horror-based. FL Sales um, is described as a dementia anime by some people due to it being very trippy, surreal, and psychological. But basically, dementia or any anime with hardcore psychological stuff like Serial Experience Lane and Boogie Pop Phantom. Do I consider this dementia? Well, kinda. I think the psychology behind what's going on is more interesting than the actual violence that's depicted on the screen, but let's get on to the actual OVA. The OVA starts off very strongly with Kakihara stabbing Ichi in the middle of his nose with a needle. Ichi freaks out about it and he starts kicking at Kakihara with these blades that attach to the bottoms of his boots. And these blades are so sharp that it completely cuts off Kakihara's clothes and it cuts off the bondage rope that Kaki has underneath his clothes and it also cuts his dick in half, though we don't get to see that, thankfully. Now, in terms of starting off an anime, that's um, one of the weirder ways you can do it. I've read comments that this is actually a spoiler for how the manga ends. So, um, <laughs> if I ever do finish the manga, I guess I kind of already know what's going to happen. And sorry if that spoiled the ending for anyone. After all, I haven't actually read the manga ending, so I don't know for sure this is definitely how it ends, but... That's the story for a different day. Now, the interesting thing about this OVA is that it's not told in chronological order. It is told from different points of I Ichi's life. One half of the OVA is about Ichi's teenage life, where he's getting bullied by other kids. And the other half is... It's an epilogue to the biggest event of the OVA that happens later on. You know, where Ichi is, you know, free from his... um depressing life but he's under a host not under a hostage but like 
there's this guy mentoring him to be like this very professional killer guy like so technically that's his adult life but i did not care too much for that side of the story i'll be mainly focusing on the disturbing elements of itchy's life and how he became who he is now so the OVA chronicles the life of Hajime, that's his real name, Ichi is like really just the name he takes on when he becomes like an assassin. Hajime has a really crappy life, he gets bullied at school, at home his brother makes fun of him because he gets beat up at school, his parents chide him for getting low grades and just pretty much being a weak kid who doesn't really stand up for himself. There doesn't seem to be anything well going for him in life besides from this fake friend he has called Kaneda. But like I just said, he's a fake friend, so you can't really trust him. And you know, Kaneda, I mean, oops, Hajime has a really crappy life. There, there's no upside to his life. There doesn't seem to be anything to look forward to except this one time during science class where he's bullied by others to rip open the frog for the dissection experiment. He doesn't really want to do it, but you know, everyone in the classroom just said, hey, Hajime, you should do it, you should do it. And the teacher just agrees with it. He doesn't care about the bullying. So Hajime is forced to dissect the frog in the middle of the classroom. And as he cuts up the frog, even though he's hesitant to do it because it's a living creature and he doesn't want to kill it, when he cuts it open, he gets an erection. And he has a full-blown erection in front of class, no one comments on it. He gets an erection, and that's what awakens his sexual sadism. He gets turned on by the, by the pain and suffering of others. Now, his sadism is very physical. He can't really get turned on unless something extremely violent happens to someone else. And it's interesting because Hajime himself doesn't deal with, with pain. He doesn't deal with a conflict. At any sign of conflict, he just pretty much boils up, cries, or just goes insane, as you find out later on. So Hajime, he's a very sick individual. He gets turned on from cutting out the frog. And when he gets home, he hears his parents having sex. They have very rough bondage sex, and that turns him on too. And it's just very extreme. It's just very surreal and weird. And like Hajime, he's so pendant with sexual energy, he has to run off in the middle of the night to go to school and kill the class rabbits. He kills the class rabbits. And he gets pent off. He, he releases that sexual energy. And everything seems to be fine until he gets blackmailed by his friend, Kaneda. And if, Kane if he doesn't give Kaneda his money, Kaneda will tell everyone in school that he was the one who brutally murdered the classroom rabbits and he will be the outcast of school. And things only get worse from there. Now, I don't want to do a complete recap of the OVA. That's what made the Metamorphosis manga video as long as it was. I felt like that video could have been shorter, but since it was like only a one volume manga, I felt I might as well talk about it in its entire capacity. But what I will do is talk about the themes of this OVA, why you should watch it, and what other series you should watch if you are a fan of this or a fan of series that use these themes. Now, obviously, the main theme of this OVA is dealing with the themes of sexual sadism. It, you have this character, Hajime, who is very timid, very shy. He does not know how to handle conflict or pain or anything negative. But at the same time, he is an extreme sexual sadist who gets ex who gets so turned on from the aspect of hurting, well, not physically hurting others, not, not initially, but rather just seeing others in pain, seeing them beaten down, broken. That is what turns him on. He lives for it, even though he, even though, even through all that, he feels like a very innocent character. He's not very, he's not aware of the repercussions of what he's doing. He's not aware of the, the consequences or the implications of this sexual sadism. He's always a victim, even when he's the perpetrator. So because of that, I find Ichi to be a bit, to be an extremely, you know, he's a nice character to analyze because I like duality. I like things that deal with duality, shy, timid, but yet has very messed up tendencies. He's insane. He's just fucked up. He's very fucked up. He's a fucked up character. <laughs> That's the best thing I can say about Ichi. He, he's not right in the head. And also, I do like... I do like stories that deal with social logical themes. This one deals primarily with relationships, whether it be good or bad. There seems to only be 
bad relations with this. Like previously stated, Ichi has no friends. He gets bullied at school every single day. His only friend only wants him for his money. At home, his parents just belittle him because, well, his dad doesn't think he's masculine enough and doesn't have a backbone. And his mom is pissed because he has poor grades and his brother is just a typical bratty younger brother younger brother type character who only exists to make fun of him. And all these different elements combine into Itchy's psychological breakdown where he finally goes on his killing spree. And that's when his life is forever changed. If you want to see the killing spree, please watch the OVA because I do not want to spoil what happens. I don't want to overhype it and say this was some grand masterpiece of a psychological, of a downfall of a character. It's really not. If I had to give this thing a rating, I would give it a 6 at the highest. But even then, I still recommend you watch it just to see how disturbing and just bizarre it is. It really is something else, you know? It has that underground feel. It feels like the type of show, it feels like the type of anime you will find in some weird DVD store in a, in a city or part of town. It feels like the type of anime someone would say they found on a dark web. And honestly, if this wasn't based off such a cult classic manga, if this was just his own standalone story, I feel like there would be some people claiming that they found this anime on a dark web and it was made by a serial killer. It just feels like the exact type of thing you see, you read about in creepypastas about people finding these strange DVDs. <laughs> it's just something else that I recommend you watch. But how do I rate the other aspects of this OVA, like the animation, the art, the music? I, uh, I I give all these other aspects a straight up five. I give the characters a six because I, I do like seeing the breakdown of Ichi's character and his interaction with the others. But everything else just looks really low budget. It's very low budget. Like, for example, in the opening sequence where Kakihara is running from Ichi who's trying to kill him, it's very obviously used, reused animation of Kakihara running down a hallway. You can see where it's looped. You can see just the same effing walk cycle with no differences. And this weird thing where as Kakihara is running, he looks back at Ichi and the camera just zooms in and out of his face rapidly and creates this blurry effect. I don't know what the hell was the point of that. It just looks extremely blurry and weird. It looks like something you would see from a AMV from the mid 2000s or something. It just looks very cheap. And I know this OVA was low budget, but come on, that was just enough. That was just completely unnecessary. The animation also uses a lot of odd camera choices and weird lighting. There are scenes where characters are completely blue or yellow and dark. It uses a lot of muted colors to go with the whole dementia, hardcore psychological aesthetic of this OVA. Does it, does it help? Kinda, I still think it could have been better done than what was shown. This just feels too cheap. Even if a product is cheap, it doesn't have to feel cheap. Work with your budget to make something really good, you know? I feel like the director just made it cheap. <laughs> and that's a shame because Shinji Ishihara, he's really good at doing action-based shows. I don't think he, you know, I looked at his resume, he really doesn't do this kind of stuff at all, to be honest. He's mostly an action type guy, and he has done hentai in the past, which is interesting because sexuality is a very major aspect of this anime. So I guess it kind of fits. The music, it's not worth talking about. The music is like, it's in the background, but it kind of stands out because it's just, I don't know, it's like bizarre, it's weird. You hear this ominous moaning. Everything about the music is obviously meant to be disturbing. Not exactly a spine chilling, but definitely a disturbing element. The one track that did stand out comes at the very beginning and end of the OVA. Like anyone who's watched the OVA knows what I'm talking about. It just features a guy screaming at the top of his lungs and it just uses untraditional music in the background. The art is, the art is just as good or bad as the animation. Not detailed, not too detailed, not professionally done, looks cheap, straight to DVD, garbage, but still watch this OVA anyway. I give this a 6 out of 6. I, I, you know, oh, sorry. I give it a 6 out of 10, you know, because while I do recommend you watch it because of how psychological and disturbing it gets, and it is fairly gory, it's, it's fairly gory. It is pretty gory when it wants to be. It's not that good. 
even though I didn't enjoy the manga as much as I wanted to, it does handle the subject matter a lot more professionally and it's better written than this OVA ever was. So what do I recommend if you like this anime? I recommend you watch Gantz. It's an anime from the early 2000s that uses muted colors, has cheap looking animation, a lot of gore, and it's a social commentary which fits in the sociological themes of this OVA. In fact, Gantz is one of my favorite seinen series of all time. I recommend it to anyone who's getting into seinen shows, dark shows, or anything that has to do with gore. Please read Gantz. This is an amazing anime and an even better manga. Please watch Gantz. I also recommend Speed Grapher, another anime by Studio Gonzo. It also has cheap ass animation, but is but is also social commentary with violent themes of sexuality and sadism, just like Ichi the Killer. Now it's nowhere near as gory as Ichi the Killer against, but it's still a violent show that analyzes how society operates and the nature of sadism and sexuality. And the final recommendation is an even an anime. It's called Dead Tube. It's a it's about a boy who gets sexually turned on by violence, and he uses his camera to film very disturbing and violent aspects of life. I will also do a review of recommendation about that manga one day in the future, because honestly, everyone needs to read Dead Tube. It is just so effed up. But anyway, that's really all I have to say about Itch the Killer episode zero. It's an obscure anime from the early 2000s that will maybe mess up with your mind if you're not experienced watching shows like this. I've seen a lot of disturbing shows and this was fairly tame compared to other stuff I watch. But it is something that's definitely worth looking at, even though fans of the manga aren't too, aren't too fond of this. OVA. But anyway, that's all I have to say. So see you guys next time. Peace.